Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, turn around and either air high five or real high five or however you want to do. But tell someone, tell them, tonight's your night. Amen. Let them know tonight is your night. <laughs> you know, one thing I have not done and, and I've neglected to do these meetings, we've had, we've had visiting ministers and I know Brother Dameron has, has uh, um, introduced the different visiting ministers and, and whatnot, but you know, I forgot to introduce the ones that I know that were here. Uh, my cousin, uh, Ruben Villanueva, he pastors a dwelling place in Swan. Amen. So we're glad to have Pastor Reuben here today. Amen. <laughs> He's my cousin. I love him. Amen. We didn't discover we were cousins until last year. It was uh, kind of funny how that uh, the Lord, uh, uh, it was really God, God was all over in it. And you know, we didn't realize how much God was in that whole deal, but um, it, it, was, it was awesome. Um, not only learning that I had a cousin that I had no idea existed, but that uh, we had crossed paths so much throughout our lives, not knowing we were related. And uh, so it's cool, man. And then he's a pastor uh, to boot. So I'm like, come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Maybe there is hope for our family. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. So anyway, I'm so glad that you're here today. Listen, if you came today expecting, you know, uh, I think it was Rod Parsley I heard say one time, and, and people were saying it, it became, it almost became a bumper sticker, the back of a t-shirt, but they said, uh, it, I think it was Parsley that said, the, the atmosphere of expectancy is a breeding ground for miracles. And I believe that. I believe expectation uh, puts us in a place where we begin to believe God for the miraculous and for the supernatural natural. So open up your hearts today and open up your uh, open up your lives today for the Lord to do what it is that he desires to do in you today. Amen. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. All right. Let's open up our Bibles right quick. I want to share uh, something with you here. Uh, let's go to to uh, the book of uh, <clears throat> first Kings. And I'm going to receive the offering here and uh, I shared I shared a scripture with you all. First Kings chapter seventeen. I shared a scripture with you all um, on uh, on Sunday. I'm trying to figure out what day it is. On Sunday, I shared a scripture with you all um, uh, out of Hag Haggai. Thus says the Lord: Consider your ways. You've sown much. You bring in little. Uh, you eat, but you have not enough. You drink, and everyone's still thirsty. You clothe yourself, but no one's warm. And he that earns wages earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord: Consider your ways. Now, I, I, the Lord put me on a journey. There was. Can, can I tell you all this testimony? And then maybe maybe we won't read the verse. But if if I have enough time, I'll read the verse. I'll give you a few thoughts on it. But I, I think it's important for you to hear this because. There, there's some people that, that have asked me over the years, uh, I, I, I got born again when I was 15. I went, in, I went into the ministry when I was 16. Uh, full time, I've been in the full-time ministry since I was 16 years of age. I started in the healing ministry, ministering to the sick, preaching all over. And when I first started preaching, I came out of the Mennonite church. I got born again in the Mennonite church, filled with the Holy Ghost in the Mennonite church, which is unusual. Uh, very unusual church, got baptized in the Holy Ghost there, spirit-filled Mennonite church in defiance, and um, go, go, went into the ministry. Lord called me to the healing ministry, very, very interesting way that he called me. But about, a, like I said, a year after I got saved, I began going and ministering to sick people. Most of the ministry I did was just laying hands on sick people. I would preach uh, Shambach messages that I had memorized off the radio because I didn't have any messages of my own. And I would... I would regurgitate these memorized sermons uh, that I'd heard Shambach preach, and then I'd have altar calls and, uh, min and the minister to the sick. Uh, but coming out of the Mennonite church, the Mennonites, they, uh, they had put this idea in me, well, if you're called to the ministry, if you're going to preach the gospel, if you're going to do the work of God, then you have to take a vow of poverty because preachers are going to be poor, and that's just the way that it is. And I believed that because I... At that time, I had this idea 
uh, because religion and tradition teaches us. They say, well, Jesus was poor, you know. Jesus didn't have nothing. He came and he was poor, you know, and he, he was here on the earth. And, oh, poor Jesus, you know. Foxes have holes. Birds have nests. The Son of Man has no place to lay his head, bless God. And so Jesus was homeless. You know, poor a shopping cart pushing Jesus. Amen. Poor a living in a cardboard box on the east side of Toledo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is that the bad part of town, east side? Okay, I thought so. Amen. Yeah, poor, yeah, poor Jesus. Amen. So, so religion, you know, religion uh, ha has perpetuated this idea that Jesus was poor. And that, that's what's taught by, by a lot of people. And you, you, you never hear nobody talking about Jesus having anything. He always didn't have nothing. And so when I started doing work of the ministry, of course, I didn't care. I didn't care if I had to be poor to preach the gospel. I don't know about anybody else, but I'd, I'd, do, I'd do the work of God whether I had to be poor, whether, I, whether there was, it was rich, poor. It didn't matter to me. I was going to do what I knew God had called me to do. God had called me supernaturally by his spirit to do the work of the ministry and I was determined I was going to do it. But how many of you know that uh, the, the, when you follow the leading of the spirit in your life, the Bible says that the sons of God are led by the spirit. Say this with me. Say the sons of God, sons of God are led by the spirit, by the spirit of God. Amen. So the Bible tells us that the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. And one of the things that I was determined to do in my life, even as a teenager when I was first starting out, is I was determined that I was going to be a son of God. And if I was going to be a son of God, then I was going to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. And so I began a journey of walking after the Spirit. Do you know if you follow the leading of the Spirit, He'll lead you to the blessing of God? Imagine that. Amen. If you find, I mean, it's, it's like this. You know those little, some of you know, I didn't know until Pastor Dameron told me, uh, Sister Dameron actually told me, that we, we were driving down the road to go get some a lunch, and as we're driving, there's this little white cart that was uh, traveling down the road, this little white cart. And she said, oh, there's the robots. I said, Robots? And she said, yeah, over there. And I looked, and there's these little carts that are, dr I guess they drive themselves. I don't know. She says, they deliver food all over town. I was like, that's my kind of cart. Glory to God. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I got a car. Now, you know what? I reckon if you follow one of those carts, uh, eventually it's going to lead you to food. I mean, you, right? I mean, at some point, that thing's going to go back to a restaurant, or it's going to, or it's going to haul food to someone's house. You're either going to end up at someone's house, or you're going to end up at a restaurant. It, wherever you follow those things, they're going to lead you to wherever it is that they go. Now, see, the Spirit of God, do you reckon the Spirit of God's going to lead you to poverty? No. Poverty's a curse. Amen. And the Spirit of God isn't going to lead you to poverty. Right. Amen. The Spirit of God's not going to lead you to sickness. The Spirit of God's not going to lead you to bondage. The Spirit of God's not going to lead you to something. If you follow the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will lead you to the place of God's blessing. Amen. Are y'all hearing me? And so, if, as I begin to follow the Spirit, now I'm going to tell you something. I didn't seek God for prosperity. I didn't seek God for Him to increase me financially. I wasn't on that journey. I was in, I was in search of the anointing. I was in search of the, you know, some people, you should have been searching for Jesus. Well, guess what? If you, like the little cart, if you search for the anointing, where do you think that's going to lead you? To the anointed one. Amen. Amen. To the anointed one. Amen. <laughs> you got to follow the right stuff. Amen. You know, visions can come from several different places. The anointing has one source. I've had, I've had, I've taken, I've taken, uh, I've taken drugs and I had visions. I've drank alcohol and had visions. I drank alcohol and saw, I thought, I thought I saw a pretty woman until I sobered up and realized, <laughs> anybody know what I'm talking about? Hey, yeah. Some of you are like, yeah, but it goes the other way too, brother Ziggy. <laughs> But you, you hear what I'm saying? So, you know, visions, dreams, you can't always follow them because sometimes the source of those things isn't God. But the anointing, oh, you, let, you can follow the anointing. Because yeah, yeah. the anointing will lead you to the anointed one. You can follow the Spirit. 
Because the Bible says the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. So as I begin to follow the Spirit, and I, it wasn't intentional. I wasn't trying to find, uh, uh, I wasn't trying to find a way to get rich or to have money or whatever. I was just following the Holy Ghost. And as I began to read the Word of God, I found out that the Word of God taught something different than what I'd been taught by religion. Religion said I was supposed to be poor. Religion said Jesus was poor. You know what I found out? Jesus wasn't poor. That Jesus wasn't poor. Jesus wasn't born poor. <laughs> and, and so I'm not going to get into all that, but I found, I found some stuff out. And as I began to follow the leading of God's Spirit, He began to show me in His Word how that it was His desires, His plan for us to prosper, for us to be blessed. Uh, in, our, in our finances. And so I begin to apply the principles of God's Word, and God begin to bless us in our finances. And I'm, I'm, making, I'm trying to make this short. God began to bless us in our finances. And um, for years, man, God would bless us with more than enough. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I didn't, have to, I didn't have to try to persuade people uh, in that time to give us an offering. I never, never have. We would get up. I would get up and preach. I applied the principles of God's Word. I'd get up to preach. In fact, there were many times, there were many times I, I'd get up to preach, and I, I, I didn't used to receive my own offerings. I used to just let the pastor get up and receive the offering for us. And some of them put ve for, forth very little effort, you know, to, to receive an offering for us because, you know, I mean, it didn't affect them. And it's like, all right, we're receiving the offering. If you want to give something, give it. But Everywhere we go, everywhere we would go, we would, we would get these huge offerings. And I remember it, it would make some preachers mad because we'd get these huge offerings. And I'm not talking, to, when I'm saying huge, I'm talking about tens of thousands of dollars would come in these offerings. And sometimes church no bigger than this church right here. And we'd have, we've had 30, 40, 50, 80 thousand dollars come in the offering. I mean, just incredible offerings. And I wasn't teaching on supernaturally. I wasn't teaching nothing on finance. I was just getting up there preaching, applying the principles of God's word to my life concerning finances, concerning his blessing. And the blessing of God began to abound toward us financially. Now, I knew that I, did, I didn't tell nobody. I didn't get up at church and say, man, God's blessing us. In fact, you know, I, I, I'd buy a nice car and I wouldn't, I'd park it down the road because I didn't want to. Here was what I didn't want. I, I wasn't trying to hide anything from anybody so, uh, because I was ashamed or because I, I was uh, uh, doing something that was unethical or ungodly. I tried to hide because I didn't want to be persecuted over what God was doing. I didn't want anyone to question why I was doing what I was doing because I'd been taught by religion that if you're, if you're really doing the work of God, you don't have nothing. Somehow poverty equaled holiness. Are y'all hearing me? So I would ta I'd, take off, I'd take it off before I got to church and put it in my pocket. I'd tear the tags out of it so nobody would know, you know, what brand it was. I, I didn't want to be persecuted. I didn't want people to question why I was preaching. I wanted them to hear the Word of God, receive the Word of God, and, and, and uh, receive the blessing that God was trying to get to them through our ministry. But, but uh, about 1998, the Lord spoke to me and He said, Son, when I told you to prophesy, He said, he said uh, when I anointed you to prophesy and I told you to do that, He said, you prophesied. And He said, and, and, uh, he said, and you, you did what I commanded you to do. He says, you were obedient. And He says, and it was a blessing to the body. And He said, and you did good. And I was like, praise God. Hallelujah. I thought, Lord, you're blessing me right now. Amen. If God tells you you did good, you probably did good. I was like, thank you, Jesus. He said, he said, and when I anointed you to heal the sick and to minister healing to the sick, he said, you went, you laid hands on the sick. He said, and, and he said, you know what? He said, you did good. I was like, thank you, Jesus. I mean, I was getting blessed. He said, when I told you to go and preach the gospel and to have revival, he said, you went and you preached and you had revival. He says, and, and he says, and I anointed you to do it. He says, and you did good. I said, that's wonderful. He said, but I, he said, son, I anointed you to prosper. He says, but you kept it for yourself. He said, and I never intended for you to be anointed to prosper 
and not deliver it to my people. He said, son, if you don't begin to, to impart to my people of that anointing, he said, then you're, I'm taking yours. And I was like, well, Lord, I'm pray about it. Because I'm, I, 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 yeah, I'm going to pray about Because I didn't want to be persecuted. How many of you know? C come on, some of y'all have already heard. We was only over there at the dwelling place for 10 weeks, and I'm sure there were already people. Well, all he talks about is money. You know, when we receive an offering, we take a few. I try to take a few minutes. Sometimes I take a few hours. But anyway, <laughs> but I'm teaching. It's because I'm teaching something. Because not only do we need for God to anoint us with the Holy Ghost and with power, if you don't have the, if, listen, if you don't have any money to take that anointing, amen. One time the Lord told me, go to Australia. You know, it costs, you know how much it costs to go to Australia? At, the, at that time, $7,000 round trip for me to go to Australia. I'm an, I'm, 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 I feel like God has anointed me. I, I, I feel like there's an anointing on my life. But you know what? You can go to the, you can go to the airline counter and tell them, I need a ticket, I need a ticket to uh, Australia. They say, that'll be $7,000. Yeah, yeah, but I'm anointed. You can lay your hands on them. They'll fall out under the power. They'll be like, whew, you are anointed. All right, how about that ticket to Australia? That'll be $7,000. I don't care how anointed you are. It's still going to cost you money to get there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so so uh, a lot of people, they're like, oh, it's all about the anointing. Yeah, but you know, there's, there's other things involved here. So... Uh, th th and there's always, there's always someone wanting to squawk. There's always some Facebook sissy wants to say something and, and, and be disparaging, call you all kinds of stuff, and people want to bring into question your integrity and your character and all these things. And, and, uh, but anyhow, <laughs> when the Lord tells you that he wants you to be obedient and do what he's told you to do, well, you know, I, I was just like, I'm praying about it. So I began to pray. I prayed in the Spirit, you know, prayed about it prayed about it. <laughs> That's in the summer of 98. By the end of 1998, in October, September, uh, September, October, November came, and our, we had always had more than enough. But by the time we hit December, I was down to $10 in, in our ministry account. I, we'd never been that. We hadn't been that way in years. Years. And we're down to $10. I'm like, my God, $10 in the account. And the, the Lord had told me, he said, I, I told you, Either you impart to my people what I've put in you. He said, I didn't anoint you for you. I anointed you for them. I didn't anoint you so you could have more than enough. I anointed you so my people could have more than enough. Yay. Are y'all hearing me today? You know what? We've, we've got to quit being indifferent. We've got to quit being resistant to the, to the blessing of God and what he's trying to get across to us. We've got to, listen, we've got to quit being disparaging toward preachers that want to teach us concerning the principles of God's Word, no matter what area those principles teach us in, whether it's anointing, whether it's finance, no matter what it is. And, and we're, the church right now, the church, if there's any teaching we need, it's teaching on how to walk in God's blessing financially. And so, the end of 1998, you know, the Bible says if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Well, you know what? Up to that point in time, I was willing, but I wasn't obedient. Boy, Lord, I sure would like to do it. You know I'd do it, God, if I could. I'd preach it if I... But I don't want them to persecute. I don't want anybody to question, you know, my integrity. I don't want anybody to question my character. But when you've got $10 and you have a budget of tens of thousands to meet the next month and you don't have any meetings, you know, you know, you know where you're going and you're like... Ugh. I got willing and obedient right away. I was like, I'll do it, Lord. Whatever you say, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. And so he said, I want you to teach my people. Well, I didn't, I knew what I knew, but I'd never preached or taught on the subject of finance. I'd never done that. So uh, the next meeting I had was in a town called Antlers, Oklahoma. Antlers. Antlers, Oklahoma. And Antlers looks just like it sounds. It is in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> there are like 2,500 people in the whole community of Antlers, you know. And so it's not, a, it's not a big town. The church is not a big church. We'd had revival there. And I called the pastor and I told him what the Lord had shown me. And he, I, said, I said, do you reckon I could come over there and just minister on the subject of finances only? I said, I know that I'm asking a lot from you. I mean, he was my friend. 
And he, because he had just had a preacher in there that had gone in there and raked the people over the coals for money. It was terrible. And, and they were hurt from it. And so he said, he said, well, uh, he said, well, you know, we've been through some things. And I said, I know. I said, and I would never ask you if, I, if I'm telling you the Lord is dealing with me about this. And he said, Brother Ziggy, I trust you. He said, comes. And then, his name's Benny Geary. We're still great friends today. He has a, now he has a church in Queen City, Texas. And we're going there, I think, supposed to go there next month. So anyway, uh, he let me come. So I, I didn't even know what, I got my Bible, and I'm like, what do I say? You know, what do I say? And I was so afraid that people would think that I was trying to manipulate them out of their money, that I, I was, I, I didn't want them to feel that way. And so I was trying to go out of my way to make sure, maybe, maybe that's what I'm doing today here, but I was trying to go out of my way to make sure people didn't feel like I was trying to uh, uh, extort them, you know, <laughs> extort money from them. And so I, I, uh, began to t I, began to, I began to tell people what the Lord had told me, and I got up on Sunday morning, I said, listen, folks, here's the deal. I said, I'm going to teach you concerning finances. I said, the anointing of God's going to come here. I said, when, 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 we begin to, when we begin to teach on this, the Spirit of God's going to fall. I said, and some of you, you're going to get under the anointing of God, and you're going to want to do things that you've never done before. That was already happening before. I said, but I'm telling you, when you preach the word, when the disciples preached, when the apostles preached, when Jesus preached, they preached, they preached, they taught, and then they demonstrated what they preached and they taught. I said, if we're going to preach and teach on finances, there's going to be a demonstration of supernatural provision and supernatural increase. And it's, I said, it's going to break out over here big time. I said, so... I said, here's what I'm going to do. I said, I'm not going to receive an offering in any meeting except for Wednesday. We're here till Wednesday. I'm only taking one offering. I said, so you won't think I'm trying to manipulate you out of money. We'll take one offering. And so I, I opened up my Bible. I didn't even know where I was going to start. I opened up my Bible and I just started teaching. Man, I'm telling you, it flowed like a river. The, the anointing came and I began to teach. And in that first meeting, people were trying to bring an offering. I'm like, no, we're not doing that. People, you know what, so one, of the only, one of the only meetings I've ever been in when people got mad that I didn't receive an offering. I'm like, no, Sunday night. I'm like, no, we're not taking an offering. Tuesday, I, I, or Monday, mo I, I'm announcing we're going to take one offering on Wednesday. Someone came to me on Monday night. They said, I'm not going to be here Wednesday. I said, I'm not receiving that. I said, you either here Wednesday to give your offering or you miss out. They were angry. But the power of God was falling. So on Wednesday night, I got up and nobody even wanted to wait. I got up and I said, well, we're going to receive the offering here in a minute. People started running and throwing money at the altar. Nearly 30-something thousand dollars came in the offering and the church was maybe 40 people. In Antlers, Oklahoma. Southeast Oklahoma. The, uh, the, uh, not the greatest uh, economy in Southeast Oklahoma. Very poverty stricken in that area. But people had, had been obedient to the Lord. They, they obeyed the Holy Ghost, and they began to sow. That, that's where it started. I went to the next church. That, that church, after, after we went there, the next, de the next Sunday, they broke every tithe and offering record they ever had. In fact, the pastor of that church, Pastor Ben today, if he was here today, you know what he would testify? He would tell you all that those meetings were the beginning of his personal supernatural increase. He, they have never gone backwards financially, personally, after that moment. Because they got in the presence of God, they got under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and they entertained the Word of God and the Spirit of God to break them free. That church came out of, uh, they, they, began to, they began to have mo way more than enough. So we went from there to the next meeting. I, t I taught in the next meeting. In that meeting came tens of, I mean, it was crazy. We, we, went, to, we went to churches and people were sowing $80,000 every day. I'm talking about s small churches. In the first four months of, of the year 1999, uh, we, we met four years worth of budget in our ministry. And the churches that we went to, all of them exploded with, with increase. God began to bless them in area of finance. Listen, I'm going to tell you something, church. There is an anointing to prosper. There is an anointing for supernatural increase. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you a little secret. Uh, God's blessing financially isn't just, doesn't just hinge on what you give in the offering. It has to do more with just giving an offering. Now, giving an offering is a part of it, but that's not all of it. 
And so we have to be willing to catch. You know, uh, I, I said to go here. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> go, let's read something else. Go to, go, to, go to 1 Corinthians. Run, run, run. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Verse 9. <laughs> look, what, look what it says. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. So here's what it says. I has not seen, ears not. How many of you have heard this verse of Scripture preached? Most of the time you hear it preached people, Oh, beloved, amen, I hath not seen, hallelujah, nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Amen. But some glad morning when this life is over, you know, by and by, when the morning comes, we'll understand it better by and by. You know, they get, they, get, they get off track. They read that verse of Scripture, and they don't go on to the next verse that gives us a bunch of revelation. As it is written, eyes not seen, ears not heard, neither is in the heart of man things God has prepared for them to love Him. But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. Amen. See, God's Spirit's been trying to reveal these things to the church for a long, long time. But here's the, here's the thing. There's some things that we receive from the Lord that are taught. That someone can get up and they can teach. And then there are some things that we receive from God that can't be taught. That eye can't see and that ear can't hear. That enter into the heart of man that, 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 that don't come through the eyes. That don't come through the ears. There's some things that you're taught. There's other things that are caught. And there's a whole generation that don't, you know, he, they, in fact, people used to say it. Uh, boy, that brother, he caught the Holy Ghost tonight. He caught the Holy Ghost. See, there's some things that you're taught, and then there's other things that are caught. And where we miss it when it comes to God's blessing, especially in the area of finance, is that a lot of times we'll go through the, through the motion of giving. And I'm not, again, I'm not negating giving. In fact, when I get done talking here, some of you are going to want to give the biggest offering you ever gave. And it's not a manipulation. There's an, anoint, there's an anointing that'll provoke you, that'll, that'll call you up higher, that'll provoke you in your offering and in your giving and in all those ways, because that's a part of the process. That's a part of, of how this works. But there's also a release of the supernatural, of the anointing that we need to catch, that we need to be willing to capture in our lives so that we can be brought up to a higher place, to, to a place of provision where, uh, where we're not dependent on the world, where we're not dependent on the world system. Amen. See, we have, there's the word system, and then there's the world system. God hadn't called us to function in the world system. He's called us to function in the word system. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give you a few more scriptures. Uh, Deuteronomy 8.1. Write these down and, and uh, just write down where they're at. And I'm going to read them to you. Deuteronomy 8.1. These will be foundational. These are ones that will help you to understand how God wants to bless you. Deuteronomy 8.1 says this, all the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do that you may live, multiply, and go in and possess the land that the Lord swear unto your fathers. Amen. So God, God's, God's word says this, uh, if we'll obey and do what he commands us to do, this, say this with me, say, uh, do all he commands you to do today. Amen. So, so what is the promise? If we'll do that, we'll live, we'll multiply, we'll go in, we'll possess the land that the Lord swears to our fathers. Now, what, what do we got to do? We got to do what He commands us to do this day. We got to do what He commands us to do this day. So see, some people, uh, some people still doing, when I was a kid, my grandmother, I went to church with her. She gave me a quarter to put in the offering plate. When I, when I got a year older, she gave me 50 cents. I got a year older, she gave me 75 cents. I got a year, anybody know what I'm talking about? I got a year older, she gave me a dollar. 
I got a year older, she gave me a dollar. She never got above the dollar, but she, she gave me a dollar. And, and she gave me a dollar when I went to church to give in the offering. Some of us never graduate from the dollar. We haven't been doing what the Lord tells us to do today. We've been doing what we've been doing all of our lives. And that's not where the blessing of God is. If you're going to live and you're going to multiply and you're going to go in and you're going to possess the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, then you're going to have to tune your ear to hear what God is saying to you today. You say, well, what if I don't hear him say anything different? Well, then you're good to do whatever he told you to do yesterday. But if you'll tune your ear to hear what he's telling you to do every day, you're going to find out that sometimes God will tell you something to do, something different to do every day. You know, there have been times that God, there have been times that God told me to sow a seed. Um, one, one time, um, one time, and then I'm, we're just talking about offering here, but one time I was in a meeting in uh, uh, Columbus, Ohio, and it was during this time, it was during this time, during this season that I told you about where the, where the anointing began to break out for a supernatural increase. I call it supernatural increase. I, I, uh, there was a woman that came to the meeting. I didn't know who she was, but anyway, I had preached on, the, I had preached a little bit, taught a little bit on the offering, and when offering time came, she came running forward, and she's the first one to put her offering down uh, in the offering plate up front. Well, after she put her offering in, the Lord spoke to me and said, put an offering in her hand. Told me how much. It's only $100. He said, put a $100 bill in her hands. He said, declare supernatural debt cancellation. He said, say it out loud. And so I, I got $100 bills out of my head. I, just like, who, who was, I told, didn't I give it? It was you, wasn't it? I gave you. So anyway, I, I mean, I'm, I try to be obedient to God. So I got a $100 bill. Uh, that woman, I said, hey, lady, come here. And she came and I put the $100 bill in her hand. I said, supernatural debt cancellation. Glory to God. And, and, when, and when I said that, there, there came some fire in my feet. Well, anytime I get fire in my feet, I know it's time to dance. Glory to God. So I said, supernatural death cancellation. The fire came. I was like, whoa, 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 glory to God. And I began to dance around, and I shouted for a while. And I didn't know if that meant supernatural death cancellation for me, supernatural death cancellation for her, or su de supernatural death cancellation for all of us. I didn't know. All I knew is that's what he told me to do. I got done dancing, and I proceeded to go on with the meeting. Amen. <laughs> two, day, two days later, my, my wife calls me on the phone. She says, hey, guess what? I said, what? She said, we got something in the mail. I said, what is it? I had taken out a student loan when I was, uh, when I was younger to go to school for electronics technology. I dropped out of school and left that sitting there because the Lord never told me to go to school for electronics technology. I, I was being disobedient. And so I left that, went back into the ministry. But how many of you know if you get a student loan, you go pay that loan back? Well, for years they had been taking my taxes. For years they had been looking for that money. And, and we, were, we were just letting them take our taxes. We're like, well, just let them take our taxes. Here we are just in the beginning of this wave of supernatural increase. And they'd been taking our money. And she said, we just got a letter in the mail from the uh, student loan people. I said, oh, yeah, what does it say? It says, we have reviewed your case. And we have determined that the money that you, that, that you have owed to us, that you don't owe it anymore. Yeah. It said on there, your debt is canceled. Yeah. I said, glory to, it was thousands of dollars. I said, glory to God. And she said, that's not all. There's a check in here for all the money that we gave them plus interest. Yeah. Oh my God. I was like, and then I told my wife the story. I said, I just slapped a hundred dollar bill in somebody's hand. Declared supernatural debt cancellation. She said, how much did you sow? I said, a hundred dollars. She said, well, it's a four thousand dollar return. Glory to God. <laughs> now listen, I know, I know some of y'all think these are just stories. That, we, that preachers just say this stuff to try to get us riled up and get us juiced up so we'll give it. Listen, I'm, I'm telling you right now, the only way I've been able to do the work that God called me to do is to live by faith in these words. I, I live by this word. All the commandments that I command you to, to do today, observe to do it. You will live. You will multiply. You will go in. You will possess the land that the Lord swears to your fathers. 
You receive that today? All right, amen. Oh, I'll, I'll give you one more. <laughs> Deuteronomy 8, 18, since it's in the same chapter. And then, uh, we'll, then we'll receive an offering. But anyway, Deuteronomy 8, 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Say power to get wealth. Power to get wealth. Say it again. Power Say it again. So you'll remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that gives thee. Notice how it doesn't say he gives you wealth. It says he gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is to say. So if we're going to see God's covenant, God's kingdom established in the earth, then we've got to, we've got to, uh, we've got to inherit the wealth that he has for us. But the Bible says he gives us power to get wealth. Have you, wondered, have you ever wondered what that power is to get wealth? Go to the book of Romans. I'm going to show you something. I want you to remember the word power. Remember the word power and go to the book of Romans. I'm, Shri, I'm going to finish with this. <laughs> yeah, Shri's like, I have no problem with this. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Amen. So, I told you to remember the word gospel, right? What? Didn't I tell you to remember the word gospel? Didn't I tell you gospel? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power. What is the power that God gave us to get wealth? The gospel. Why do you think the Bible says in Luke chapter 4 that Jesus said this? He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the He's anointed me to preach the, to the, he's anointed me to preach the, to the, why did Jesus preach the gospel to the poor? Well, because the gospel is the power of God. It's the power that God has given us to get wealth. What is it that poor people need? Amen. Amen. If you're poor, now, oh, let me help you. Go to, go to Luke. I'm almost done. Go to Luke. <laughs> oh, I, I should have taken you to Luke first. Go to Luke chapter 4. Run, 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 run. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Look what it says. This is Jesus talking. We know it's Jesus because it's written in red. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now listen, in a nutshell, this is what Jesus was anointed to do, right? Basically, Jesus is saying, this is why I'm anointed. So he said this, he said, I'm anointed to heal the brokenhearted. So what did Jesus come to do for the brokenhearted? He came to heal this, not trick question. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. Say this with me, say Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. Now, why did Jesus come to heal the brokenhearted? It's not a trick question, it's very simple. If someone's broken, they need healing. So Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted because if you're brokenhearted, you need healing. He came to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captive. Say deliverance to the captive. So what did he come to do for the captive? To deliver them. Why did he deliver the captive? Because if you're captive, you need deliverance. Amen. So he came to heal the broken, because if you're broken, you need healing. Opposite of broken is healed. Yes. He came to deliver the captive, because the opposite of captive is delivered. Amen. The recovering of sight to the blind. So he came to give sight to the blind. 
Why did he, now I know I'm being facetious, but why did he come and give sight to the blind? Well, if you're blind, it's, it's very simple, isn't it? Very simple. We read this verse of scripture regularly. We, we say we believe it. He came to heal the broken, deliver the captive, and bring sight to the blind. What's the very first thing that he said, though? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, if he came to heal the broken, deliver the captive, bring sight to the blind, what do you think he came to do for the poor? What is the opposite of blind? What is the opposite of broken? What is the opposite of bound? What is the opposite of poor? He came, came preaching the gospel to the poor. What's gospel? Good news. It's the power of God. What's good news to poor people? You don't have to be poor no more. There's one fellow that got it right there. Amen. See, religion, tradition has bound us up and kept us from entering into the place that God's prepared for his people. See, the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, that all the gold belongs to him, that all the cattle belongs to him, that all the silver belongs to him. It all belongs to God. And you know what? It's our inheritance. And God's trying to get his people to rise up in the power of his spirit. God's getting, trying to get us to rise up in the power of the Holy Ghost and receive the inheritance that belongs to us. Amen. Amen. See, the gospel is the power of God. Joshua 1a says this. <laughs> listen, listen what it says. I'll just, I'm going to quote it to you. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Amen. What's, what is the book of the law? Of course, we, we're, we're not under the law, but what is, what, what is it talking about? The Word of God. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. What, the Word of God is the good news. It's the gospel. It's the power of God. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. You know what's going to happen if you look at the gospel, if you keep the gospel in your mouth, if you say it continually, if you say it, notice it doesn't say this book of the law shall not depart off of thy dashboard. <laughs> this book of the law shall not depart off of thy coffee table. This book of the law shall not depart off thy lap. No, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Listen, you've got no business talking about you can't afford it. Well, you better put the word of God in your mouth. Are y'all hearing me today? I don't care what it looks like in the natural. You can't afford it. You know why? Because he came, glory to God. <laughs> glory to God. Oh. <laughs> See, now some of you are getting this. Amen. See, the word of God, the gospel, the power of God has to stay in our mouths. We have to meditate on it. See, some people think meditate on it means think about it, keep it in our minds. That's not what the word meditate means. Meditate to me means to say under your breath, yeah. Yeah, to say it under your breath. In other words, the, the, when, you're, when you're not saying it loud, say it like this. Right. So this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt say it under thy breath. Day and night. Why? So you can observe to do according to all that is written therein. What's going to happen as a result? For then, look what it says. It doesn't say God will make your way prosperous. It says then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. In other words, because you're keeping the word of God in your mouth and you're doing all he commands you to do today, it's not God that's making your way prosperous. You're making your way prosperous by believing the power of God, by believing the gospel of Christ, by believing the word. Are y'all hearing me today? Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Glory to God. See, tonight, I want some of you to declare enough is enough when it comes to poverty, when it comes to lack. Today, you've got to make a decision.
I think I, I may have killed. No, there it is. Praise Jesus. <laughs> We've got to make a decision that we're not going to live according to the... Why in the world would you want to listen to the world when it comes to how you're supposed to live your life? God's people, we, we, we join together to bash sometimes those that are God is blessing uh, in their finances. We join in on bash. I remember when Jim and Tammy Faye when they went through all that they went through, of course, you may or may not like Jim or Tammy Faye. It don't really make no difference to me. They've done a whole lot more in their, they did, a, they did a whole lot more in their lifetimes than most people do in theirs. But Jim and Tammy Faye, when they had the uh, PTL, and I don't know if you realize this, but PTL uh, was the second most visited amusement park in the nation. Uh, they were second only to Disney. A Christian Amusement. Why do you think the devil worked so hard to try to destroy that place? Because people were only the only place people were going more than Heritage USA was to Disney. And so Jim and Tammy, when all that went down and people were talking, I remember when the news reported, they said, they said, here's Jim and Tammy Faye's doghouse, and the doghouse, their doghouse has air conditioning. And I remember I went to church and church, but can you believe that? Their doghouse had air conditioning. And I, you know what I said to them people? Uh, when people said that, I said, well, you know what? If anyone's dogs ought to have air conditioning, it ought to be our dogs. Yeah, amen. Yeah, amen. Not the world. So you mean devil's kids' dogs ought to have air conditioning and the Christian dogs ought to be hot? We act like there's something wrong with Jim and Tammy Faye's dogs having air conditioning. I thought, my God, if anyone's dogs ought to have air conditioning, I'll be God's people's dogs. They looked and they said, they had gold fixtures. I thought, well, if anyone ought to have gold fixtures in there, if, if you're going to have a gold faucet, if you're going to have a golden shower head, if you're going to have gold and stuff in your house, if anyone has that, it ought to be us. You know what? Christians, they'll go to Las Vegas. They'll see the beauty of, of, the, of, the, of the buildings and, and, the, and the architecture, and they'll see, listen, you go to Sin City, and I'm telling you right now, marble floors and, and lights and everything done top notch. But you Go to, you go to church and you got people that got remnant carpet and pieces of this building that somebody tore down and they used it to build the church and we do it halfway and it's not even up to code and we're trying to hide it from the city and then we're trying to be proud of it. My God, if anyone ought to have anything nice, it ought to be God's people. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. What in the world? You know what's made us think that it ought to be different? The, it's, it's been the devil himself that has persuaded God's people that we ought to back up and not have. And I'm going to tell you right now, some of you need to rise up today. You need to make a decision that enough is enough. You're not going to live that way no more. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, the, the, time, the time has come. See, we're living in a time when the enemy's not going to be too friendly about loaning God's people. In fact, we, we, we went to the bank to, buy, to purchase a building. We're in the process of purchasing a building. You know that the world, they want the church to jump through hoops to borrow money to try to do God's work. And it gets worse and worse and worse every year. But you know, the Bible says that when God's people rise up and live in his promise, that we'll be the lenders and not the borrowers. Glory Glory to God that we'll be the head and not the tail. That we'll be above and not beneath. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, some, some people, they, 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 this is what I'm talking about. What is happening right now, what's working in this, you got to catch it. Because it's not just the offering so it's 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 obedience to do. See what you know Reuben did? Reuben just did something that was uh, unconventional. Right. 
That's not usually how things are done. And most of us, we don't want to do those things that are unconventional. We resist because we don't understand or we feel like that someone might make. But that's the, that's the thing. Whatever he commands you today, do it. If you'll do it. See, it's not just what you give. It's how you give it. It's not just what you give. Sometimes it's that he moves on your heart and he says, you know what? You need to stomp that offering up there. You need to lay it down like you're laying something down before. I, and I'm, I'm just telling you, there are lots of ways that God moves upon us to do things, and we've got to be willing to be obedient to Him. <clears throat> Glory to God. I've, <laughs> we've, had, we've, had, we've had, I've had people dance their offering to the front. Boy, I mean, they just dance it up. Some people, oh, I, I, I had one fella, he came and gave an offering. And he, he brought his offering, and he gave one offering. And I was up there, and I kept on for a minute. And then he came up, and he had his wife's purse. And he gave an offering. He emptied his wife's purse out. Gave an offering out. Of, I mean, emptied it out. <laughs> then he went off. By the time the offering was over, he's the last one. He came up and he came up with his wallet and he emptied it out. He pulled out his pockets. He went like this and he danced all the way back to his chair. But that night the Lord blessed him big time. God began to open up the windows of heaven, pour that fellow out a blessing. There wasn't room enough to receive. Now, I, I put that, remember I told you I put that $100 bill in that girl's hand? After I did that, everyone in that church began to run to that woman and throw money at her. <laughs> they were throwing money at her. <laughs> we, we scooped it up, put it in her hand. She just cried. <laughs> Sat down. But the next night she came to church and she said, uh, I, want, I want to testify. I want to tell what the Lord did for me last night. I said, awesome, tell us. And she began to tell the story. She said, last night I came. She said, I'm, I'm married. Uh, my husband wasn't with me. We have three kids. We're behind on our rent. Uh, we owed our rent. We owed our electric bill. We owed our um, telephone because people had landlines. We owed our telephone bill. And she said, we didn't have but $100 in the bank. She said, in fact, she got her checkbook out. She said, it was $115 and so many cents. I can't remember how much, how many cents it was. But she said, exactly. She said, so, she says, as you was talking, the Lord said, uh, give it all. And, and I'm, not, I'm not telling you to give it all. I'm just telling you the testimony. The, the Lord said, give it all. She said, but Lord, she said, my husband's not here. Oh, what if he don't agree with it? The Lord said, give it all. So she wrote a check. Whew, glory to God. So she wrote a check for every dime that was in her, in her account. She said, and I went up and I laid it down. She says, and that's when you ran over and put um, some money in my hand and you shouted something about debt cancellation. She said, well, uh, then pretty soon people started throwing money at me. You put a big wad of money in my hand. She said, Brother Ziggy, I went home. I counted that money. She told us how much it was. I can't remember right now because it's been a long, while back. She told me how much it was. She said, but she said it was enough for me to pay rent, to pay my electric bill, to pay the phone. She said to buy groceries for me and my kids. She said, I've got a nickel left, but I'm trusting that God's going to bless that. Amen. And, and that night she sewed that nickel. She sewed that nickel. It's super, it's supernatural. Listen, church, this isn't, I'm going I'm to tell you something. You, ha and you have to trust that what I'm telling you is right. I'm not, I'm not here to try to manipulate anybody out of anything. But I do know that God, it's God's desire to bless his people in a measure, financially, like we've never seen before. And right now, there's a greater measure of the anointing being released to God's people. And here's what I call it for supernatural increase. See, supernatural increase is money you can't earn. Supernatural increase is money that you're not capable of. All of us have earning potential, but God wants to bless you with money that you're not capable of earning. God wants to bless you with money that, uh, that comes supernaturally. See, it's the blessing of God. It's the blessing of God. Uh, let me ask you a question. Can you earn healing? 
You can't earn healing, can you? If you're going to be healed, if you're going to receive a supernatural healing, how are you going to get it? You have to receive it, right? You have to receive. It's a free gift. You have to receive it. Amen. All blessings of God have to be received. You can't earn them. Why in the world do we give credit to God for money that we've earned? We deceive ourselves into thinking that the money that we've earned is God's blessing. But God's blessing comes to us when we don't earn it. Yeah. See, God wants to bless you with money that you didn't earn. Yeah. And that's hard for us to understand. It's hard for us. To, we're like, well, God blessed me with overtime. No, because if God blessed you with overtime, then he blessed that drunk next to you with overtime too. Yeah. If it's God's blessing, then why did, why did that reprobate heathen next to you receive the same blessing? Wow. Listen, I think it's okay for us to give credit to God for all that He does in our lives. But we have to understand that healing, God's healing, supernatural healing comes, and it doesn't come because we earned it. It doesn't come because we, it don't come because we took essential oils. That's not, God, that's not God's supernatural healing. Supernatural healing comes by the Spirit, and we receive it. Well, there's money that God wants to get to us that we don't earn, that we didn't get because of overtime, that we didn't get because we went to work. We got it because it was money he wanted to get to us supernaturally because God blesses his people with supernatural increase. Amen. 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 Thank God. <laughs> Diet Dr. Peppers and everything. Thank God. Amen. So... Uh, let's, I'm going to pray over your offerings here right quick because I want, God to, I want God to continue to give us a greater and greater revelation. of what, You know what? If you, hadn't been, if you hadn't hit this offering yet and you won't bring your offering, bring your offering right quick. Come on. In the name of Jesus. I like that. Slam dunk that thing. Amen. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. He's a good God, isn't he? <laughs> yes. Amen. Thank God. And you know, that's, that's how it works. We were in a, meet, we were in a meeting in Chickasha where a Chick it was at Chickasha First Assembly. We were there, and that church, they needed a revival bad. It was bad. And <laughs> so we started that revival. And the Lord, and, and I know I'm, I've taken the whole time to teach on, is this helping anybody, by the way? Is it helping? I know I took the whole time. And it's, it's not because I'm trying to, you, you have to believe me when I tell you this. Church, um, my heart is pure before you. Honestly, I wish there was some way that I could communicate this. You can ask Sheree. Sheree, you know, she's, she's, uh, my, she's my helper. She's my assistant. She helps me in, in doing um, this ministry, uh, the traveling ministry. Uh, she helps me at the church as well. She's our director of evangelism at, at Winner's Church, at our church back home. She is, she's an evangelist. She really is. And God's, God's hand is upon her. But she'll, she'll tell you, anyone I bring here from my church, they'll, they'll tell you, this is not a put on. I, I have lived this way from the time I was 16 years of age. My, I'm standing here with, a, with clean hands and a pure heart. There is no malice in me. There is no level of manipulation in me. I am only telling you these things because they are the truths that I have lived in my life before God. And I'm telling you there is no, there is no better way than God's way. But at some point, you know what? I know there, there may be people out there, and I, I've, I've not met a lot of them. But I do know I've met some. I've met some people that they were, they were charlatans, that they were purposefully bilking God's people out of money. I've, I've met, but not very many of them. And I've been doing this for a long time. There aren't, we, we assume that there are people that are out there that are doing this. And I've met people, I've met people that, that um, the way that they raised funds or the way they received offerings was questionable. But it, it, the, the only reason why it was questionable was because it wasn't the way the Lord had shown me. Come on, come on. But nearly everyone I've ever met 
that had a that had a heart for God. At some in some way, God began to show them and reveal something to. Them. We've got to quit assuming that everybody is bad. That everybody is wrong, that everybody's trying to take us for a ride. At some point, we've got to begin to trust that there are some people that God has called and that God has anointed to lead us in a way that, that, God, will, that God will bring people in our lives. Because some of you have ministry to do. Some of you have things you have to do. And if you're going to get it done, you're not going to get it done by cutting yards or, or even building houses. I mean, you might, even be, you might even be a contractor, but you're not going to get it done contracting. Some of you, God's going to have to bless you supernaturally. And, the, and that's what the Lord has done for us. And sometimes he uses folks like you. And at other, listen, I'm, I've literally gotten, I've literally gotten uh, uh, unmarked uh, envelopes with cash in them in the mail. With thousands of dollars in it. I mean, fat envelopes. I remember my friend Ben Aguirre, the one I told you about, the where we preached first time we preached supernatural increase. When we were when we were preaching that, they sowed a seed. They sowed a seed they didn't have. They put an IOU in the offering. IOU six hundred dollars. They knew they were going to get six hundred dollars in a week. IOU six hundred dollars. The church put in the six hundred dollars for them, knowing that they would pay. I mean, they're the pastors. They're going to pay it back. The next day, while pastor's wife is at home, uh, she hears a knock on the door. A woman comes up to her and hands her an envelope. Says, "Listen, we're leaving. We're moving. It's a drug dealer's down the street." There's a crack house down the street. The drug dealers were moving. The moving truck was up front. My husband said, I ought to come. We know y'all are the preachers in town. My husband said, we ought to come drop this off. Handed them a, an envelope this fat. They opened it up. It was thousands of dollars in hundred dollar bills. The drug dealer came, turned it over. You know what that is? The wealth of the wicked laid up for the righteous. The wealth of the wicked laid up for the righteous. Amen. See, these are the kinds of things they've done. But it, when we were in Chickasha, the Spirit of God began to move in this way. And there were people that came to church that needed cars that before they left on, 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 some, on some nights, before people left that had need of cars, they left with cars. There were people that were homeless, need of homes, and they had homes given to them. You, people would sit in the meeting. Pastor Mikey, my friend, Pastor Ward, he was on staff at my church up until uh, uh, several weeks ago. But uh, he, he's traveled with me uh, different places. He was in those meetings. He came, sat in those meetings for, we were there for seven months. I said, Pastor Mikey, did the Lord bless you at all during that meeting financially? He said, oh, yes. Now, he didn't, he, I, had him, I had him get up and receive an offering or two, you know, just get up and say a few words. And he never, he never preached, I don't even think. Now, maybe he did. Maybe he preached once or twice. But I said, Pastor Ward, I said, D had you ever figured out how much, because uh, we were talking about how that, that spirit of, of supernatural increase was in the atmosphere. It's in, this, it's in the atmosphere right now. Listen, you ought to take a chunk of this anointing and take it home with you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But, but he said, I said, did, uh, I said, did the Lord bless you? He said, I said, did you ever calculate it up? He said, he said, well, let me figure it out right quick. And he figured I got his phone out, figured it up. He said it was over 14, 13,000 something dollars that people came and put in my, in my lap in seven months of him just sitting in the meeting of him just see. So some of you, you're already experiencing it. We've got to be obedient to the Lord. I'm telling you, if we'll learn how to yield to God's Spirit in every way, God will see to it that we're blessed in every way. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory. Let's lift up our hands and thank the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Now I'm going to pray. <laughs> I'm going to pray over this offering. Father, we thank you for the offering. We pray, God, your blessing upon it in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless the gift. Bless the giver. God, bless everyone that is not only given sacrificially, Lord, but those, God, that are giving out of the abundance that you've already given to them. Lord, I thank you that your word is true. Lord, you are the, you, you are the one that confirms your word. And so, Lord, may your word be confirmed in your people in this house in the name of Jesus. May your grace abound toward them, and as your grace abounds toward them, may they increase in every area, not just financially, but, Lord, may they increase in every area, including their finances. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Marisobondomorobotayaharabah. 
Come on, let's pray in the spirit real quick. Celebre eta yahara. Mana samara maharam romose. Tu ramasi keche bengele tele be ere biasa kachara. Moro somona maharabasa keche bengele tea. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Selemende. Enemy sarabo kolo koli al tiarabatai. Mani shemende ne mese keche bengele kele kiri se freda. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Jana mata. Mana somono mo crede. Bili se predri ek shepena. Murisano mo horo mo siba. Durbare dri ek se prebiche te de besa. In the masa, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for it, Father. We give you praise. 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 Tell me your name, sister, real quick. Next to Kathy there. Rose, that's right. Rose, the Holy Ghost tells me, Mani Sahi Aramanta. He's, the Lord tell me he starts to talk to you about things that he wants you to do. And you, in the natural, you know that you've faced resistance in doing some of the things that the Lord has put in your heart to do. And it's your desire to get radical. <laughs> it really is. You're just uncertain how, how that path, that path of being radical is going to open up to you. But, I, but I, hear, I hear the Lord saying this. I hear the Lord saying... That he wants to change, he wants to change uh, your confession. I may have said this to you before. I hear the Lord saying that he wants to change your confession. I hear God saying that he's going to change the words that you're saying. And the words that you're saying are going to begin to align with his word instead of aligning with your circumstances. The Lord says a lot of times what happens is you face a set of circumstances and then you begin to voice or rehearse your circumstances with your words, with your mouth. You begin to say, oh, this is always and this is, and these are the kinds of words that you use. And the Lord says, all that does is it fortifies the negative. But I hear God saying, your words are about to magnify the Lord. The Lord, and we know what it means. You know, we all know what the word magnify means, right? It means to, to make big, to make large. Amen. And so the Lord says, you're going to minimize your negative circumstances, and you're going to begin to magnify the Lord. And he says, as you begin to magnify the Lord with your words, I hear God saying that he's going to begin to infiltrate and begin to work in every part of your life, your house, your, 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 uh, your family. The, the Spirit of God is going to begin to move and work in all facets, in all area of your home. God says, God says He wants you to begin to take up faith that as you begin to magnify the Lord and magnify the things that the Lord has said to you, that it's going to bring about uh, a, uh, a maximum change. Not a minimum change, but a maximum change. The Lord says when you see a little bit of change, God says He doesn't want you to acknowledge what you think you see. The Lord says, Lord says quit saying what you see and start saying what you want. Amen. Ooh. <laughs> quit saying, you know what? When God said, when God said, let there be light. God didn't say what he saw, because what he saw was darkness. God didn't say what he saw. He said what he wanted. He said, let there be light. The Lord tells me to tell you this. He said, I created you to say what you want. The Lord says, what do you have to lose? <laughs> the Lord says, the word isn't going to cost you a thing. God says, the minute you begin to open up your mouth, he says, to declare what you want. He says, the enemy will be there to try to silence you. The Lord says, don't be silent. He says, continue to say. God says, if you'll speak my word, if you'll decree the thing the Lord says, the desire that I put in your heart, if you'll decree the thing that I placed in your heart, the Lord says, it'll become a reality. And he says, and it won't take near as long as what you dream it will. Amen. God says that there are there are men's hearts that are in his hand right now. God says his hand is already on their hearts. The Lord says all he's got to do is turn. He says to turn his hand. The Lord says and in the turning of his hand, God says he will turn the hearts of men. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Praise God. Glory. Glory. Does that make any sense what I'm telling you? Wonderful. Thank God. Hallelujah. Listen, let's thank God for what he said to this sister here. Amen. Now, what's your name? Huh? Maya. And how, or you know her? Me. <laughs> Kathy, this is, who's this? Huh? That's all right. I didn't. <laughs> Sheree, come on, Pastor. That's the same girl. <laughs> Maya Gilmore. Maya Maya. I prayed for you then before. She's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go. She thought I might, I thought I might get out of here, but no, oh no. Mad is a player. How old are you, Maya? You're young enough. I can ask. Sixteen. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> you little boy, let me have your hand real quick. Just a, thank you, Jesus. Now, are you serving the Lord with all your heart? Yeah. You see what he tell me? I'm, I'm praying for her. He's talking to me about you. But I'm going to pray for you. I mean, I'm, I've got something for you in a minute, but. You know, he said, by your pressy crash at the end of the mar of the edda, milk free the master car of free day, but a jadang elegant nesta. He tell me there's some things he's dealt with you about that he wants you to, to separate yourself from. There's some things he don't want you doing. And the Lord says, you said, well, it don't matter. God don't care nothing about that. Here's what he wants me to tell you. Yes, I do. I put it in your heart to depart from it. The Lord says, if you'll depart from these things, God says, you'll have far less resistance. The Lord says, you're not going to earn it, but God says, you'll remove the resistance that's kept you from achieving what I want you to achieve. The Lord says, what do you want more? What do you want more? And so he says, there's some things he says, he's, he wants you to depart from, he wants you to turn loose of, he don't want you to, he, do, he doesn't want your hands in some things. So God says, you're going to remove your hands from some things, and you're going to let God accelerate you toward the fulfilling of his purpose in your life. Amen. Maya, give me your hand now again. Thank you, Jesus. Sele hura sabana nantare evrosia are jedengele kilioya. <laughs> I, hear, I hear the Lord saying that he's going to make up for all the things that you feel like that you have. Um, all, God says he's going to make up for all the things you feel like that you've missed out on. Oh, <laughs> I hear the Lord saying that sometimes you look into the lives of others and you say, I've missed, in fact, it's just in your mind and in your heart. You're like, I feel like I miss so much. I feel like that if I had that, that I'd, I'd be different, that things would be different, that, that, um, that I, may, I'm, I may have been more successful and maybe I've been able to do this better. But I, but I hear God saying this. I hear God saying, as long as you lean on him, there, you have nothing lacking. There's nothing missing. The Lord, the Lord says, if you'll lean on me, there's nothing lacking. There's nothing missing. The Lord says, he says, don't let the enemy uh, continue to try to make you to believe that because you feel like you lack what others have had, that somehow or another because of what was missing, you can't hit the mark. I hear the Lord saying, he created you to hit the mark. I hear God saying, I hear Gar God saying that uh, um, what he's, he says, he says that it's his desire to make you an example, to use you, and not in a negative way, to use you to inspire others so that others can see that, um, that there are those that God uses to hit the mark. You're going to be like an arrow. Uh, an arrow that is shot out of the bow of a marksman. I hear the Lord saying that when, when he turns you loose, you're going to hit the mark. Amen. When he turns you loose, you know, think about, think about how, a, how an archer goes through the motions of shooting an arrow. He puts, the, he puts the arrow on the bow and on the string. But before he turns loose, before that arrow hits the mark, he pulls it back. Nobody ever likes being pulled back. 
The Lord says there have been, there've been some things that you felt like you've been pulled back in. But the Lord says you haven't been pulled back, God says, because you're, you're being set back. The Lord says you're only being pulled back to be turned loose. The Lord says, I'm going to pull you back. I'm going to turn you loose. God says, you're going to accelerate toward the target that I want you to hit. The Lord says, when you hit the mark, God says, it'll be an example to many of, of my goodness, of my grace, of, of my hand extended uh, toward you. I hear the Lord saying that, uh, I hear the Lord saying that for the month that's coming, you're, there's, there's not going to be a day where you're not going to be aware of his presence. The Lord says, he's about to pester you big time. Amen. 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 I hear God saying you're going to make some pivotal decisions in the next month. I hear God saying there have been some things that have been uncertain. He says he's going to settle them. I hear God saying that there's been some things you don't know how they're going to turn out. But I hear God saying that within a month you're going to know how they're going to turn out because God's going to give you direction. I hear the Lord saying you're not going to be in a holding pattern no more. You're not going to be on pause. I hear God saying that he's about to push play. Amen. I hear the Lord saying he's about to push play. He says this is going, I hear God saying this season is going to be one of the most favorable seasons of your life. The Lord says not only are you going to rejoice in this season, but God says this season is going to be so good for you that when you get down the road in another season, you're going to look back at this season with joy and you're going to rejoice that God gave you such a wonderful season in your life. You're about to hit a time of great blessing in the name of Jesus. I lose that to you today. Come here, I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Lift your, now you're 16. I mean, I said all that. It's like, my God, lift your hands to him. And the Mosi, Hori Sabana, Shara Doroso, Hanimase Gejede, Ho, Ho, Ho. Ho, Ho, Ho. 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 Ha, 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 Morosa, Noro Metaya Garazie, Oro do Olo Moresa. Lord, let mine be three days drunk in the Holy Ghost. Three days drunk on the new wine. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Now, I see, I don't remember everybody, so. And then if you change your hairstyle on me, I won't remember you. It don't take much to fool me. <laughs> you know, people, all you got to do is wear a different hairstyle. I'll be like, have I, do I know you? Have I prayed for you before? You'll be like, <laughs> and it don't take much. Just come with you to the side, brother. I don't even recognize you. <laughs> Cameron, glory to God. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jesus. Cameron, is that that's right, right? Cameron. Ah, ah, ah. How do I remember your name? Come here, Cameron. I'm afraid for you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all, pray with me. I, this is, well, we're not at a movie theater here. Borosha, <laughs> Borosha, 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 Liprona ma hambre, Duregele Kelesibo, Rona Mansana, Chiquera Bure Sebengele, Lucredri is the Greenje Mendea, Nifronesana, Malcaredri Ise. Mel Shedri and Daya, Maracobro, Melesehedai, Arajanara, Anasiandin, he may stare at Friedrich Shedri. It's like I see something, it's like I see some sort of financial, uh, something financial being awarded to you. It's almost like you won a, 
Uh, it'd be like he's on the prices right and won something or something. I mean, it's weird. It's like a, um, it's like a like I, someone would have a like you're being granted something. You know, I guess they do that in school or people get a grant or whatever. But I, somehow or another, I see some, I see some finances being released to you. I see some money being turned loose at you. It's almost like it's been hung up, but God says he's going to unhang it. Amen. There have been some stuff that have been kept back, but I hear the Lord saying he's going he's to turn it loose to you. You're about, you're about, to, you're about to receive, uh, you're, but you're about to receive something in, in the form of money. And, uh, and, and you'll, you'll have to give glory to God for it because there's no other, there's no other way you could ever think of or, or understand where it came from other than the Lord saw to it that he is going to get you something. Meneso raba. But I, but I hear God saying this. He says there are, um, God says he's about to take you into new territories. He's about to deliver you into a new place. I hear, I hear God saying that uh, the last time that we encountered one another, the Lord opened up some doors and he tore down some walls. And I hear God saying that you've explored the, the, the areas that God opened up to you, and, and, uh, but then you started getting bored with it a bit because it, it, it became old hat. But I hear God saying, I hear God saying, you're not going to have to stand in front of me to break out into new things again. I hear God saying, today you're going to break out into do, new things. God's going to expand your territory. He's going to open up new doors. He's going to tear down boundaries and open some new things up to you. But I hear the Lord saying this. He says, the next time there needs to be a breakthrough, I'm not going to have to stand in front of you for you to get it. I hear the Lord saying, I hear the Lord saying, he's going to teach you how to break through in the name of Jesus. The Lord says reason why he's going to teach you how to break through. He says you're going to think in the beginning that he's teaching you how to break through for you. But the Lord says I'm not teaching you to break through for you. He's uh, I'm teaching you to break through for others. Amen. Because, because God says it's still in my heart for you to break others through. The Lord says uh, the Lord says that the work that I do in you, he says people are going to see it as being a supernatural work. The Lord says it's in the realm and in the area of the supernatural. He says that he wants you to help others break through in. I hear the Lord saying that... Um, I hear the Lord saying, you haven't yet realized the fullness of the flow of the supernatural that God desires to release. But the Lord says, he says, you're at the threshold. He says, um, the season, he says, of, of, a, of a breakthrough into the supernatural, he says, is upon you. And the Lord says, I'll cause you to lead many. He says, in the beginning, you'll, <laughs> in the beginning, you'll lead ch children. You'll, you'll take them and you'll, you'll speak into them and you'll impart into them. And, I, it's, and, and it's not, maybe it's not even necessarily something you even want to do. You may even be resistant to it, but I'm telling you, God's going to put you with children and those children are going to challenge you uh, in ways that you have never allowed anyone else to challenge you. God says he's going to use the children to provoke something out of you that hasn't been, to, been able to be, have been brought out of you by any, anybody else. He says, but as he brings the children around you and as they're drawn to you, and the Lord says you begin to have compassion toward them and you begin to have a love for them. The Lord says, the lo a love for them like I have for you. God says it's going to draw something out of you. The Lord says you're going to begin with children, but the Lord says your ministry and, and what he wants you to do is not going to end with the kids. God says he's going to graduate you uh, to begin to lead others to the place to believe for the miraculous uh, to break out in their lives. Because the Lord says, the Lord says, I'm going to make you a living testimony of the miracle working power of God. The Lord says you will be a living witness of the miracle working power of God in the name of Jesus. So, so, I, so I hear God saying this. He says, he says, even though you backed up a bit, the Lord says, you're breaking through today in the name of Jesus. I loose you today in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I loose you today, Cameron, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> that was a good word. Amen. Thank God. That was a good word for her, wasn't it? Thank God. How old you, Cameron? How old Cameron? All these 16-year-olds getting these words from God. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Amen. 
There's an army rising. Have you ever prayed for that fellow before? Is he a troublemaker? <laughs> I'm playing. I'm What's your name? Gene? I know. I heard him the first time. I'm playing. <laughs> Uh, Gene. <laughs> no, I mean Dean. <laughs> Glory to God. Who dragged you here, Dean? How are, are y'all connected? She's like your stepmom, or? Oh, I get it, yeah. She, you, you consider her to be a mama to you. Come here, come here, Dean. I'm going to pray for you. Come here, Shannon. I'm going to have you come with him. I knew I need to pray for you, that marijuana leaf on your shirt. No, no. I'm going to get on you. I'm going to get on Yeah, you don't even know. Oh, Jimmy, Christmas. What would y'all bring me to over here? Are you an Ohio State fan? Wow. I see the Lord. He knows everything. I'm, no, I, I'm just like, oh, really? Yeah. The rest of them are Michigan. Those dirty rats. Huh, uh, are you serious? I gotta walk out the door. <sighs> oh, no. Y'all are destroying my image of you. I will win next Oh, you too? Oh, my God. Not Robin. They're behind you, Robin. The enemy is behind you. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. I, mean, I like messing with people, man. In, in Oklahoma, it's OU and OSU. OSU's in Stillwater. OU is in Norman. And, and you know, it's a, it, it, uh, Sheree is an OSU fan. And, and then I'm like, I don't even know why I let you in the airplane. You understand? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, touch Dean today. <laughs> Do you go to church anywhere, Dean? Uh, no. no? Not really. Yeah. 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 Fill me full of your spirit and let me live in victory from today forward. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for filling me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Dean, you're already starting to get it. You can already feel it. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting the numb buzzies, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, boy, I feel the Holy Ghost. Lord, I thank you for Dean. I pray, God, that you'll touch him today. Fill him, Lord, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord, let him leave out of here today. <laughs> let him leave out of here today, Lord, filled to overflowing. God, use him. Use him, God, to be a voice to his generation. God, let him preach the gospel. Let him preach the gospel, Lord. Let him declare your word, God, all across this region. Lord, let him be a voice in a dark place. Let him be a spreader of light, God. Let him be a light in the darkness, Lord. Let him be a lighthouse, God. A beacon, Lord. Beckoning people that are lost, that are hurting to come to you. I thank you for it, Father. I thank you, Lord, that today, today is the beginning of the greatest days of this young man's life. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for it, Lord. It's nice, right? <laughs> hey, you want to sit down, don't you? <laughs> he, he, he like, mm -mm. <laughs> Dean, don't wait, don't go, not yet. I, I know, I know it's tough to stand, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I, 
When you went to church, where'd you go to church? Um, I went to a few different. I went to church. Okay. I went to Dor on to Dorris Street, went to the Abbas Okay. And then Right. You're a tiny and how old are you now? I'm seventeen. Seventeen. Good God, he's targeting these teenagers big time. See, God's filling you with His Spirit. God's filled you with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> You're going to here, here. I don't, I don't know if it's before you leave this building, but at some point tonight. You're going to open up your mouth, and when you open up your mouth, you're not going to talk in English. There's, there's a bubbling that's happening in your gut, right? It's like a percolating. And the, the Bible says this. Jesus, the Bible said, Jesus said that God would give the Holy Ghost to all those who ask. The Bible says that when people were filled with the Holy Ghost uh, in the New Testament, that they spoke with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. And that tongue, that language, that, that unknown language, that language you've never spoken, is, is, is in the innermost part. Jesus said, out of our bellies would flow rivers. Yeah. And right now in your belly there's a river, and it's about yeah. to, that river is about to overflow. So I hear, the, I, I, the Lord wants me to tell you this. The Lord tells me, when you begin to speak in that unknown tongue, don't let it freak you out. Because the Lord says, when, when you begin to release that prayer language, God says, it's like you're going to be transported into a different world. You're going you're gonna to swear that you left your body. You're going to be like, it's, it, you're going you're gonna to think it was like a, what, what the world would call an out-of-body experience. I hear the Lord saying this to me, to tell you this, though. He says, don't try to make it freaky. He says, just understand that I'm touching you. The Lord says, don't try to make it something mystical. The Lord says, just, he says, just know that I am touching you, that I am working with you, that I am setting you apart, the Lord says, for the purpose to which I've called you. But I, but I hear God saying this, the days of you not knowing your purpose, those days are behind you. The Lord says, you are about to discover the reason why you were created. The Lord says, you're not going to search no more uh, to be satisfied with the things of this world. But the Lord says the thing that's going to satisfy you is that you're going to come to a place where you have a revelation of the purpose and the plan of God for your life. And you begin that journey today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank God, Dean. Amen. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought him, Shannon. Amen. The trend begins again. Everybody you dragging in here is getting, going to get called out. Hallelujah. You know, every person she brought over there to Holland got called out. Isn't that right? <laughs> Thank you, my brother. I received that. Ooh, oh, okay. baptized. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me look about here. I know something like... I mean, you, did you, are, you, are you going to preach? Well, I did. <laughs> I did, I know. I did, I did. Well, actually, I just did some teaching, but that's, amen. We received that, amen. Shumaramase. Tell me your name again. Sarah. Lefredrisi. Step out, Sarah. I'm going to pray for you real quick. Amen. Aramraida. I like that shirt. Y'all need Jesus. That's an Oklahoma shirt. Y'all need Jesus. <laughs> we need that shirt, Sheree. <laughs> oh, Carrizo Sarah from Texas. No, no, from Archibald. Kind of close. <laughs> you grew up there. Where do you live now? Oh, okay. Hey, come on, Jesus. Are you in school? Just working. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, the Lord tells me, he says he's going to take care of you through the rest of this nonsense. I hear, I hear the Lord saying that, uh, I hear the Lord saying that um, he's, he's, I, see, I, see I see stability. <laughs> I, I see things not being uh, uh, up and down and 
uh, changing from moment to moment for you. I see God establishing something, and I see it remaining constant. I hear the Lord saying he's about to stabilize things for you. The Lord says it may not be constant for those that are around you, but I hear the Lord saying he's creating stability around you. The Lord says you're not going to fear that uh, next week you're not going to know what's going to happen. I hear, I hear the Lord saying that he's speaking peace, uh, that he's, he's declaring a stillness in your, in your spirit and in your mind. God, God told me to tell you this. He says, he says, I never gave you the responsibility of taking care of yourself. I hear, I hear the Lord saying this. I hear the Lord saying that, uh, that at, at some point, at some point in your, in your bringing up, in being brought up, I hear the Lord saying that some people said, well, you're going to have to take care of yourself and, and trying, to, trying to give you this idea of responsibility. But the Lord says this. He says, I never, I never expected for you to take care of yourself. The Lord says, it's always been my desire to take care of you. So I, so I hear the Lord saying, I hear the Lord saying, when times of instability have come, you wondered who was going to take care of you, how you were going to be taken care of. The Lord says, I'm going to take care of you. Uh, I'm going to take care of you, the Lord says, by bringing you to a place where you don't have to worry about ups and downs and all arounds, but where you understand that uh, I'm your source, that I'm your supply, that I watch over you. The Lord says, the Lord says there are times that you've said, Lord, I don't feel like you're there. Lord, I, I don't feel you. You said, Lord, I don't feel you. And the Lord says this, the Lord says, you don't have to feel me. God says, all you have to do is know uh, that I'm with you. You have a promise. The Bible says, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. And so I hear God saying that, um, that in the past, uh, you'd, that, uh, at times you'd be anxious if you didn't feel something, if you didn't have something. The Lord says, you're not going to be anxious no more. The Lord says, you're going to be confident in the word of God. You're going to trust the word of the Lord. And God says, even in times when you don't feel, the Lord says, you're going to know that he's present. You're going to be fully persuaded. And God said, because of that, he says, you're going to be stable. You're going to be steady. The Lord says, there's not going to be a, your, your life isn't going to look like a, like a, uh, what do you call it when they hook uh, your heart up to a... <laughs> yeah, EKG. You're not going to look like that line on an EKG. You're going to be... Amen. You're going to be straight. I, I hear the Lord saying this. I'm going to use you to heal sick people. The Lord says, I'm going to use you to heal sick people. God says, you're going to lay hands on the sick and the sick are going to recover. The Lord says, you've always had it in your heart to help those that are injured, that are hurting physically and emotionally. I hear God saying he's opened up the door for you to do that. So Father, I thank you today. I loose this to her in the name of Jesus. We declare this thing to be done by faith in your name. We thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that, uh, that this girl here, that she'll be whoo, filled to overflowing. Filled to overflowing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. You receive that? Amen. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Let me, how old are you? I mean, you're young enough I can ask, right? 28, see? <clears throat> Where do you, what, what field do you work in? So you're at uh, the automotive plant, and you're in the quality control area, or? So you do inspections of all these things. God's going to open up you a ministry to minister to sick people there. Come on. Now, I know it's crazy. When everyone else's jobs are in jeopardy, yours will never be. You don't have this, you don't have the seniority that some people have, but I hear God saying it don't seniority don't matter when he's involved. Yeah. That's what God told me to tell you. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Because he, he says this. He says there are those that are confident that if, if everything goes bad and everything goes down, they're confident. that they, In fact, some of them will, may have even been as 
uh, so bold as to tell you, you're going to be one of the first ones out here. I ain't going nowhere. They may have said it this way. I have seniority. The Lord says this. The Lord says, because I'm with you, he says, everyone that's around you ought to be concerned for their position because the Lord says, as long as I'm with you, God says, I'm, gonna, I'm going to cause you to maintain the ground, the Lord says, that I've given you. So does this make sense to you? Because it don't make a lick of sense to me, but I hear the Lord telling me to tell you that uh, instability is not going to affect you in the name of Jesus. This unstable environment isn't going to affect you. It's not going to affect uh, your ability to... Uh, uh, to do the job or anything like that. But I do hear this. I hear the Lord saying he's opened up a door of ministry for you to minister healing to the sick right there where you're at. Amen. And so, uh, I thank you, Father. Let her, be, let her be way blessed in the name of Jesus in the things that you have for her. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And you're, uh, tell me, uh, Sarah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Sarah, I'll let you sit down. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Boy, tonight was way different, but boy, is it good. Amen. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's, let's pray in tongues for a little while longer. And then we'll, we'll see how the, the Spirit, the Lord, lead us here. Amen. And Mara jedengele chede betia, ara soprondre mahara, bra ansa caceda basia. Ara soprobuse frebeli, ala mahara driesa prebici. Hallelujah, para sofreba, mara driesa fredrici che c'è ne malchiara. Mara son groro nar pera driese frebrici. Now I'm, I'm just going to tell the sister, and I'm, I'm, we'll see how he, but yeah, but tell me your name. Joanne. I see fire in your legs, like there's a fire, like there's a burning in there. Like, not a bad burning, it's this, I see this fire of the spirit in your legs. Ere frias te kenje drietre mal it's like I see the opening up of, of uh, blood vessels. Like, uh, like there's, a, there's, a, uh, there's a restoring of, and, and I, don't, I don't think you've had like major circulation issues, but I see God opening up some things in the, in the circulation of your legs that are going to alleviate some, maybe some, some, um, I would, I would call them, you know, sometimes uh, I, I refer to it like as afflictions because some people, they have infirmity. They have major sicknesses and, and whatever. And you, you, may, you may be battling something in your life, but it's like little afflictions, maybe something that, some pangs or something in your, uh, that happen every now and again. Or so, but I, related to circulation and see the Lord and the fire of God working uh, in you to, uh, to fix in the name of Jesus. In, the, in fact, I hear the Lord, in fact, I hear the Lord saying there's a lot of people here today that, you know what I'm going to say? If you've had issues in your legs, I won't pray for you because there's an anointing here for you to receive a healing. Come on. There'll be a bunch of you come because th that's what he said. But come on, come. I'm going to pray for you. From the pain in your toes. I'm telling you, God's doing something for you. The fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God. I mean, look at this. Mare se probo, sharadri estrafa, frandrunama. Tell me what's wrong with you. Tell me what, tell me what neuropathy is, somebody. Nerve, 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 numbness, nerve. Does it come from circulation trouble? Is that what it comes from? Yes. Okay. Handrieta Mahara Fuda. Because I don't know these things. I just, all I know is what the Lord told me. That's right, Andrea. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Mara Soporo. Come on, y'all come in here. Yeah. Thank you, Sheree. <laughs> She's helped me out. 
She got what? Okay. Thank you, sir. Lift up your hands to him. I'm going to pray for you. Father, I thank you today. <laughs> Lisa get to feeling the Holy Ghost. She just gets on her knees, man. She's like, I'm feeling it, man. I'm down here, amen. Thank you, Lord, for touching these people. Lord, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Arabose, Chadabaya, Shoyaya Korosobo. Now, in the Masa, in the name. Shoyahaba. Now, for the glory of God. In the Masa, in the name of Jesus. Shuyaya, ho, sabaha, tachapore, que le sea, on a masa. Come here, lift your hands to Jesus. It's okay. Lift your hands to the Lord. I thank you, Father. Touch those eyes. Shuyayo, namase, now, in the masa, in the name. Shu, arabase, ha, 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 ha. Bara sobongle, double dose in the name of Jesus. Badase. Ya 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 ma ha ho ho su ya bare seke shene mande ene masakaya dada ho re kale gile chere boyo bora hu i curse this trouble in the name of jesus be healed mara soboya nara fredera jennifer did you come for prayer come here right quick oh ya kada fredin so ko ya ya da ma sha ya dora Maranoba, shuya ba hese. Hu ha, shamana, marasobo, harafride. Le cride de me se keche bene masakura. Ya ya sobo, hu ha ha ha. Nana masa pano monse ke jede bedi. Harasifeda. Ya ya sobo, hu ha la ha. Hu 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 Yarabara se kecha na hana, bure se heyo, hu hu, mara se kecha. Oh, Andrea, Nanas, I didn't even think about you over there. Hari somono, ene masiba. I command you to let her go in the name of Jesus. We said, Mr. Cora, I agree with Andrea. I agree with heaven. Lord, I'm hearing. I'm hearing. Ringing in my spirit that enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Oh, enough is enough. Corosobono morose. Aradruesa paradride. Arendre ene mosacare. Bruso morondre marengrigi. Rec telebre. You know what I hear the Holy Ghost saying? He says, and we may have talked about, I don't know if we've done, just know that this isn't coming out of a conversation we had. So we've talked about this, I don't remember it. But I hear, I hear the Lord saying that the enemy for, has work, been working against you a lot, specifically I'm seeing the last four years. And he says, the Lord says that what the enemy has tried to work to do is to get you to embrace a spirit of infirmity that was, that's a generational thing. That it's the hope of the enemy to get you to embrace something that it seemed like everyone, that, that there were ones in your family that it was, they, it was like they inherited it. <laughs> and then they passed it down as an inheritance to others. And, but the Lord says this. The Lord says the reason why you've endured what you've endured is because you've been resisting the acceptance of this thing. The devil's trying to persuade you that you're weak in faith, but the Lord says you're not weak in faith. So, so God, tell me, tell you this. You are not weak in faith. That's a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. The enemy would like for you to believe that somehow or another uh, that you're missing it. The Lord says you're not missing it. You're being attacked. This is an attack from hell. But I, but I hear God saying this. I hear God saying that um, some of the gaps that were in the, uh, they, they, we, we talk about standing in the gap and making up the hedge. Some of the gaps in the hedge that the enemy had tried to, you know, trying to get through. I hear the Lord saying those, I may have told you this before, that those, some of those gaps are being sealed up 
But I hear God saying that this year won't finish out before you see. He says you won't be 100%, but the Lord says you will be nearly 100% by the end of this year because of what God does in you this season. He says, uh, <laughs> he says some of it will come, and it will come through moments of obedience, something that you do out of obedience to God. Some of it will seem to come because someone says, hey, oh boy, I feel holy. He says, uh, some of it will come because someone will say, hey, I heard this, and you'll, and you'll implement it, and some of it will seem natural. But I hear the Lord saying this. He's in all of it. And, uh, but the Lord says that the four, that it's like a four-year battle is over in the name of Jesus. This year comes to an end. Thank God. So, Lord, I release that today in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that the work is being done. Que le se preda, rumara som romeda, fredriex se preshidrieda, orondro nolo viara kataya, arfedriex se freda. I hear the Lord saying that you're going to, there's going to come a time here, it's coming soon, that you're going to try to attribute what you're going through to something else that, that you have physically. The Lord says he's not going to let you attribute what you're going through to anything physical anymore. Or, because the enemy, he, he said, what you don't realize is that the enemy me is trying to get you to blame yourself for what's going on with you. The Lord says you are not to blame. He said hell is at the root of what's been going on with you. And the Lord says I've given you use of my name. The Lord says you're going to carry my name. God says and these things are going to bow to the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. And it's Sahara Bruseda. What? Tell me your name. Xander. Xander. I'm going to push on you, but not so you'll fall. Just because I feel like I'm going to push on you. Yama sobora, yorama su kalalfide, haoramo se keche manden in masada. I do something for Xander today, God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. What's, tell me what they, what's wrong in here. And you, you have artificial knees and you have pain in your hips. Lord, thank you. <laughs> thank you for what you're doing today. I declare healing in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Watch her. <laughs> Kathy, let Show ya maraso, burro so coyo borese in a masa corroso bongele jea for the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Oh, ye nana, bressing genjige. Yes, I know. Kalesiha, who haya, boroso, boroso corre beheta, mara segeja, menesihane mestrefa. I loose the fire of God's spirit on you now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. God, I give you glory. I give you glory, Lord. I give you glory, Lord. We honor you today, Father. For the glory of God. For the glory of God in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord. That's your mama, right? That's your mama. Jdrona malkrine men strangan in gero. Mar herbo rosse frel il giaravane. Shu brese ken viaran menemesta haratruesta parge drege frido mongologosa paradrice mengele cera. Ha, ya strupe ke te de men ste de becheti. U glocara fri mengele gi. Ran tana mate bariosta ele lihesta pana mengenge de bi. Oh, Kraduma, 
Nenê. Ai, <risos> ai, ele não. Aleluia, Ravang, eres tu. Oh, na mane meio. Arazugeje. Nane se rebeque telefiro no yaye. Oi, 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 mora strana. Marvere dre eze. Nulbahanda na manjeda. Upre ese Fredrici. El que aramante. I hear God saying, carefree days are ahead. I hear the Lord, I hear the Lord saying, although you, it's not like you have been unhappy, but it's been a long time since you've been carefree. And I hear, I hear the Lord saying this, there was a, there's a season and a time that you've known that your cares were cast upon the Lord. You knew you weren't carrying a burden uh, that you, that God never intended for you to carry. But it seemed like there, uh, it seems like just, and it wasn't, it wasn't like a, uh, as a result of any one thing, it's just like as time has gone on and you've walked through this life. Um, you know, when Moses was walking and he came upon the burning bush, out of the bush, you know, came the voice of God. And the voice of God said, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. And, you know, a lot of people, they wonder why the Lord told Moses to take off his shoes. And, uh, and it was, it was, it was uh, symbolic. It, what, 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 the reason why God told him to take off the shoes is he, he was telling Moses, you've picked up some uh, dirt along the way. You've picked up some, uh, some stuff on your shoes along the way. Take them off and rid yourself of what you've picked up along the way because you're on holy ground. I hear God saying some stuff that you've picked up along the way that, is, that has caused you to to take some cares upon yourself. The Lord says, these things that you picked up, he says, he, they're coming off of you in the name of Jesus, amen. And the Lord says, the Lord says, you're going to, uh, you're going to be carefree. Some, he says, to the point where some people are going to call you irresponsible. But the Lord says, you're not going to be irresponsible. God says, you're going to be carefree because your cares are going to rest on, smack dab on the shoulders of Jesus, amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. I hear the Lord saying that you're not going to grow weary in well-doing. The Lord says if you won't grow weary in well-doing, then in due season, the Lord says, you will reap a harvest. God says don't faint. He says your harvest is ahead of you. You know, you know what I hear God saying? He says, I've not overlooked you. I've not forgotten you. The Lord says, I remember. The Lord says, I remember the promises that I made you. The Lord says, I remember the sacrifices that you've made. The Lord says, there are deals that we made. God says that you, that when you made the deal with God in your spirit, you knew that God was in agreement with the deal that you made. But it seemed like God hadn't come up with his end of the bargain yet. And you thought, well, because you love him, it's, it's like, Lord, you don't owe me anything. But God says this, God says, God says the time for you to receive payment, reward, for you to receive the benefit of the, of the deal you struck with God. The Lord says that, that season is on you. The Lord says, I, I know I don't have to bless you. The Lord says, I get to bless you. Ooh, he says, I don't have to, I get to. And so, in Imasta, that you are, you, you're about to, you're about to, you're about to run into the blessing of God in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Father. I lose it to her in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> What's your name? Her name is? Oh, Alyssa. I thought it was. <laughs> Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> How is she to you? She's my granddaughter. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes. Lord, touch Alyssa today. Lord, do for her what you did for me. Touch her, God, with the fire of your spirit. 
Lord, may she, uh, may she be arrested by the Holy Ghost today. May it leave an impression on her that she'll carry all the days of her life. God, I pray that you'll set her apart today. Set her apart today for your glory. Mark her yes. today, Lord. Mark her with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Mark her with yes. your fire, God. Yes. Brand her with your yes, spirit. Lord. Let her be set apart unto yes. you. We put her in your hands today, yes, God, Lord. and we thank you, Lord, for what yes. you're doing in her life. In the name of Jesus, yes. I thank you for it, Father. Amen. 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 <laughs> Listen. Eres Adriato, boy. Yes, Jesus, eres suya. Borro som hombre. Lord, amaste cara fride. Aspura mengeleje. Eres fredia. Give him a new heart, God, in the name of Jesus. But we're not even asking you to fix the old one. Pump a new heart into his chest. Amen. And now, Mose probe edriage driecto baya. Na ara moseke chetre elevi e atuma. There's one in heaven with his name on it. And so, Lord, we loose that new heart into his chest. We loose that new heart into his body. You got a, pro you got a prophecy, and it wasn't, a, it wasn't a godly prophecy. The word was that your, uh, that your health would deteriorate and that your organs would begin to follow and they would begin to weaken and they would begin to deteriorate and you would grow weaker and weaker. But I have a better, I have a better word for you. I have a, it's not a word from doctors, it's a word from heaven. See, I hear, the, I hear the Lord saying this. I hear God saying, I hear the Lord, I hear the Lord tell me to tell you, whoo. He says it's not that the he says it's not that the doctors are wrong, they just don't know. And I hear God saying he's gonna put you on a schedule. The Lord says you're to follow the schedule of God. I hear the Lord saying that you don't like to follow schedules, but I hear God saying it's time for you to begin to follow the schedule that he provides for you. But I, I do hear this. I hear God saying he's strengthening your organs. Your lungs are being strengthened. Your kidneys are being strengthened. Your stomach is being strengthened. Uh, your, uh, your, your arteries, they're, uh, they're being opened in the name of Jesus. And in Mostreba, the plaque that's in your, uh, in your system is being removed in the name of Jesus. Your liver is being touched right now in the name of Jesus. I see the hand of God on your intestines right now. The, every major organ in your body is being touched right now by the power of God. I hear the Lord saying that he's infusing you with new life. New life in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Robert, is it? Yes, and you receive it in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You're not growing weaker and weaker. You're growing stronger and stronger in the name of Jesus. And said, there's a scripture that says this, and the house of Saul grew weaker, but the house of David grew stronger. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's you, bro. I'm only 25. So. Only 25. Amen. Ana <laughs> Mambreda. Lord, touch my sister today. Touch her, God, for your glory in the name of Jesus. I loose your spirit on her right now. I thank you, Father. I thank you for the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, glory. Listen, I think we're, I think we're going <laughs> to. Okay, amen. If you want prayer, I'm not going to deny you that. Amen. Belfedriek sa kreji, burre se gengel in jengreda, burra sa bangala hayato, 
Heresararie, nana ma redo bo setrege, arvide me. I hear the Holy Ghost saying that it's like during the season we was in revival in Holland. The Lord stirred something in you. He revived. He, it, it's like he stoked a fire in your, in your belly. And you, you burned with that fire. But um, it's, it's like life, life came rushing in. And when life came rushing in, uh, uh, life in the natural tried to come and to quench the flame that God had that God had stirred up in your spirit. And I, and I hear the Lord saying, you, you hunger to burn with the fire of revival. You hunger to burn with the fire of God. You hunger to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You, it's your desire that when you open up your mouth to declare the Word of God, that you declare it with power, that you declare it with boldness, that you declare it with, uh, uh, with an effectiveness, that your words uh, pierce the hearts of men, that men are convicted as they hear uh, the Word of God preached through your mouth. It's, and you've, it's like you've seen a picture uh, that God has painted of your future and what He has for you. Uh, and that's, what he, that's, that's how you see it. But it's, been, it's seemingly been so elusive and, and so difficult. But there was something that happened. There was something that happened in Holland. Something happened that ignited that. And you saw you was like, man, that's it. That's, that's it right there. And I, I hear the Lord saying this. He says, hoo, hoo, hoo. He, says uh, he says what he did in you. He says he did in order that you might know that what was what you had dreamed, what you had, uh, what you had seen, only seen in your in your spirit, but never saw manifested. The Lord said, I manifested in that time so that you would know that it wasn't just a dream, that it was a reality that I had birthed in you, that I had, that I had put in you, that I'd, that I'd really set you apart. The, but the Lord says this, the Lord says, who, he says, uh, he says, uh, don't, uh, he says, don't be discouraged that it seems that the, uh, that it's been a process. The Lord says, uh, you're not going to get stuck in the process. The Lord says, you're going to make your way through the process. You're going to get to the other side. The Lord says, uh, the Lord tell me to tell you this. He says, just, just like there was nothing that you did in the natural to cause that flame to burn, the Lord says, there's nothing you can do in the natural now to cause that flame to burn. In fact, I, I hear God saying, you know, you, it's, this is weird because it makes me think of the uh, a Fantastic Four when the human torch, he would say, flame on flame on. And when he said flame on, he would burn. I hear God saying there's coming a day when you're going to be in the back and you're going to say flame on. And the fire of God is going to come upon you. And you're going to be turned into another man. And the Lord says that there'll be people that will testify that have known you from the time you were a little boy. And they're going to say at those times when you burn with the fire of his spirit, they're going to tell you that you're unrecognizable. That you're not the same person. That it seems as if you've been possessed by the Holy Ghost. The Lord says you are being possessed by the Holy Ghost. God says your hungering and your thirsting is not going the Lord in vain. But God says your hungering and your thirsting is producing results in the Spirit. The Lord says just hang on a bit. You're going to see it in the natural. But don't think that you're laboring in vain. God says uh, He sees you. He hears you. And the Lord says you're moving toward uh, the fulfillment of, of His destiny for your life. In the name of Jesus. I lose that to you right now. Father, I thank you for it. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Haribose. Yele lora davane manzara. Arfe, come close. Kesheda. Who? Senebreda. Hori mo. I just want to put my foot up. Keshia. Ale secreta. Lilenia Monsana, Ari Andona Mosebra. Here's, you, Lord, tell me, tell you, you're doing good. You're not, you, he says you're way too hard on yourself. The Lord says you're way harder on yourself than I've ever been on you. I hear, I hear God tell me to tell you this. He says, quit blaming me for you feeling bad. The Lord says, I'm not making you feel bad. He said, that's you. <laughs> The Lord, he told me, he told me, to, he says, he says, that, he says, that's all you've known is to, is to, uh, um, 
all, you, all you've known is to self-analyze and to, and to draw a conclusion. And, and you've been quick to be a more judgmental of yourself than the Lord has been a judgmental of you. But, but I hear God saying this. He says, you're growing. You're growing. He says, you're growing more now than you've ever grown before. God's, God's, God's growing you up spiritually. So I, I hear the Lord saying this. He says, you won't always wrestle with, you, with guilt. You won't always wrestle with shame. God says, there'll, there'll come a time, the Lord says, when you'll forget about the guilt, when you'll forget about the shame, and you'll just rejoice in the Lord. But I, but I hear God saying this. He's going to teach you how to worship. He's going to teach you how to get lost in worship. The Lord says he's going to teach you how to tune everything else out and just tune into him. The Lord says, uh, you, and he says it's something you desire. It's something you want because you don't feel as if you're as engaged as you need to be in worship and you feel like that you're being hindered. The Lord says the devil can't hinder you. Amen. God says I've already taken care of that. Amen. The Lord says but he is helping you in the spirit of your mind to facilitate the, uh, the uh, uh, depth of worship that you're looking uh, to uh, release to the Lord. But I, uh, he says, he says, the only reason he's having me tell you this is so that you'll be encouraged that God has heard you, that he's been looking after you and that he knows the desires of your heart. God, tell me, tell you this. He says, you didn't desire those things on your own. The Lord says, I stuck them in there. He <laughs> says, you desire it because I made you desire it. And so he says, uh, he, he says this, Ooh, he says, he says, you thought within yourself, you thought, we've got to get over there to the revival. We can't miss this because our answer is there. The Lord says, you're right. He says, your answer is in my presence. He says, if you'll run after my presence as hard as you can, the Lord says, you'll never go back to what you were. God says, you may stumble. The Lord says, you may, you may stagger under the weight the Lord says of the temptation that the enemy throws at you, but the Lord says, you're not about to go back in Jesus name. Hallelujah. So I loose that to you today in the name of Jesus. Woo. Ha ha. Ha ha. Oh, Alan, glory. You want, you want me to pray for you? <laughs> yeah. He's like, I've been helping. I need something. Amen. Two. I hear God saying that he's about to do something for you, Alan, that uh, you've never, God's about to give you uh, a position and put some things in your hands, something that you've never had, something that you've never handled, something that you've never uh, received. I, I hear the Lord saying, that you're about to, you're in, your responsibilities are about to increase. The Lord is about to trust you with more than what you've ever been trusted with before. Because God says, you're, he says, he, he's found you to be trustworthy. The Lord says, uh, he, he says you've been tested and you have, you've been found faithful to, uh, to handle the things God says that he uh, gives you a responsibility over, um, to handle them in a way that is not, that is not uh, uh, reckless. Mm. I had a vision one time, and I can't, I can't tell the whole thing, but someone in the vision, someone that had a lot of wealth, put some money in my hands. And when I saw it, they, it was an offering that they were giving me. And this, this individual's like loaded. And they promised, you know, they were going to take care of me. Uh, I was supposed to preach at their church in this vision. And they, they, they got in the Holy Ghost. And they ended up taking the whole service. And he said, don't worry, I'm going to take care of you, this preacher. And it, 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 you're going to hear this and you're not going to know what the vision meant. But anyway, I, I have to tell you this part. So he kept telling me, I've got something. I've, I'll take care of you. Don't worry. Even though you're not preaching, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to bless you. Don't worry about it. And I was like, I'm not worried. Just go on, brother. And so uh, when we left the service, he said, here, I told you I'd bless you. And he handed me three bills. And they looked like they were uh, $5 bills. But when I examined them, they, 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 uh, uh, I, I didn't examine them well because when someone hands a preacher money, 
you have a tendency to not want to look at it and make people feel, yeah, yeah, you just kind of, and so that's what I did in its tradition. That, that's what it represented in the dream, religious rigmarole. And so in the dream, I took, it looked like $5. I folded it in, I folded it once and then I folded it twice and I stuck it in my pocket. And I was like, praise God, thank you, brother, you know. And I got in the car with Brother Ted. And when I got in the car, I was thinking in my mind, I thought, boy, this guy, he's supposed to be uh, all this supernatural increase and all this, you know, walking in wealth. And I know good and well, he just handed me $15. <laughs> I thought, I mean, he's supposed to be the money man. He handed me $15. That's what I'm thinking. And so I pulled the, I pulled the money out of my pocket. And when I looked at it, it was three $5 bills, but those $5 bills looked different, like they were collectible, like they were rare. And I, collect, I, collect comic, I collected comic books, and I collect comic books. But the, the, uh, uh, a comic book is graded by the condition that it's in. Money is graded that way, too. The value, it devalues if you fold it, if you bend it. And so I looked at it, I said, oh, no, this is special money. It was worth way more than face value. And I thought, my God, I've ruined it. And I started trying to straighten it out I, I, because I didn't treat it right. I didn't treat it right. And then in the vision, I was, I, was, I was caught up in another vision. And this preacher that had handed me that money, he's standing with uh, Brother Hagen. And Brother Hagen, in the, in the dream, in the vision, Brother Hagen pulls those three bills out of his pocket and hands them to him, to this man that gave them to me. And, and he takes them and he examines them and he realizes what they are. Then he turns around in the vision and he looks at me. He said, what I gave you wasn't regular. It was special. He said, quit treating what's special as regular. He says, uh, he says Brother H Hagen gave it to me. I'm giving it to you. And so I, I didn't, in the vision, I didn't treat right. So the Lord was telling me, be careful. What I've, here's what I hear the Lord saying. You, when, when God has put stuff in your hands you looked at it long enough to determine the value of it and God says he, he can trust you with things of value so I hear the Lord saying your responsibility is going to increase the weight of that responsibility isn't going to weigh on your shoulders in the natural the Lord says you're not going to wring your hands over things like you have in the past the Lord says you're going to trust that the Lord's going to give you the wisdom necessary to do with, with uh, uh, what God wants you to do with what he entrusts you with Alan, you're, 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 uh, God's called you to serve, to serve, and you're going to serve, uh, you're going to, you're going to serve with joy, you're going to serve with gladness, and there's going to come a blessing on you because of your willingness to yield to the anointing that God's put upon you to serve, the Lord says, and that that anointing of servitude is going to cause a uh, blessing uh, to come to you. Financial blessing, spiritual blessing, physical blessing, blessing for your family, blessing over your house, blessing over your marriage, blessing in every way. But I, but I hear God saying, uh, it's, it's a, it, this is a season of promotion for you. The Lord says, you're not staying where you were. Uh, you're, you're being promoted. You're being lifted up to it. You're going up to the next level. You're taking it to the next level in the name Amen. of Jesus. So I lose that to you, brother, in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. I keep trying to get away. And... <laughs> <laughs> now, I may have told you this before. I see, I see different streams of revenue coming into your... I see that uh, God wants to bring different, uh, uh, different sources of, of money coming into your life. Did I ever tell you that before? That there's not one way that God wants to cause money to come to you. So God's going, to, God's going to begin to work with you and give you a plan and give you a design. God's going to cause you to become creative in your ability uh, to, uh, to generate money and to generate revenue and to generate income. And you may not have a clue or an idea right now what that looks like or what that means. But God just wants you to be aware of the fact that it's hovering over your life that uh, there will come a moment in a time when it engages. 
when you become engaged in it and it becomes engaged in you. But the Lord wants me to remind you that you'll not be dependent, you will not be dependent on men to provide uh, for you. I hear the Lord saying, he'll be your provider. And many times the way that he'll supply what you have need of and supply what he needs for you to, to uh, funnel into the kingdom will be through these different streams and different sources of revenue. God says once you start getting in the flow of that, God says that you're going to see that there's, there, it'll, it'll almost be as if you see there are no limits to the blessing that God can bring in your life as a result of these things. So I hear the Lord saying don't give up on it. I hear the Lord saying he's, uh, his wisdom is in you for it and he's going to bring it to pass in Jesus' name. Thank God. I lose that to you my brother in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Come here, Titus. Amen. Lift your hands up to him. Lord bless Titus. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Barra subana. Enifridia. Lord, shrink his stomach for his mama's sake. Glory to God. Reduce his appetite for you. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. Lord, I thank you for Titus. God, I, I, I pray that your blessing be extended toward him. Lord, let your favor, let your favor uh, be made manifested. May men look upon Titus and see uh, that you favor him, that your hand is on him, Lord, that, you, uh, that you're uh, using him. God, I pray that you'll, uh, you'll, you'll uh, uh, give him a sharp mind. Let him be like a sponge. Let him absorb information. God, I pray that it won't be hard for him, not one day in school. I pray, Lord, that as he continues his education, that the higher he gets up in grade levels, that it will not increase in difficulty. But Lord, he'll just absorb all that is necessary to get him down the road, Lord, that you're creating for him. I thank you, Father, that he's not just going to be a good student. He's going to be the best student. I thank you, Lord, that he's going to rise above uh, his fellows. I thank you, Father, that those that he are his classmates, that, that he'll be the one that they look up to, that they admire, that they desire to emulate. Lord, let him be a leader and not a follower. God, let him lead people, and as he leads people, may they lead them to the foot, may lead them to the foot of the cross in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. I loose your spirit on him, and I thank you, Lord, that the anointing uh, is resting mightily upon him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Well, glory. glory. How many of you received something today? <laughs> If you didn't, there's always tomorrow. Amen. Yes, For God is good. God. What a mighty God we serve. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, we ought to sing it. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me make sure we're done here. Thank God. <laughs> Glory. Yeah, let's sing. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. All oh, the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. He's a mighty God. Amen. Thank God. Brother Dameron, come, will you? Listen, I love you guys. We're back here tomorrow. I know I'm keeping you long, but you'll live. It'll, you'll make it. Amen. It's not a big deal. It's only, you know, only a few days here. Thank God. Hallelujah. But come back tomorrow. Come with expectancy. Now, listen, I know some of you are like, well, you know, what are you going to preach on tomorrow? Because I want to know if it's going to be worth my coming. Oh, it'll be worth it. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I mean, we're the because you know some people have their preference. You know, if you're going to get up and spit cotton, we want to be here. If, I mean, if you're going to get up and shout like you know, get all Pentecostal, we want to come. We like that. But but here's the thing: let's come and let's let the Lord do what He wants to do. Let's come, let's come expecting, but expecting that God's going to have his way. Amen. Thank the Lord. So tomorrow, same time, 7 p.m., we're coming with expectancy. Invite someone to come. Bring someone that you know needs a touch from God. I'm going to be here. I'm not going to miss it. Amen. So you come too. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't, don't let service just end here.